All right, so we're probably going to get into our next match pretty soon. You kind of have to go. Uh, before you go, any shoutouts? And who do you think is going to be the second place person between Life Coach, Blue, and Zoro? I'm not sure if you know what happens already, but uh, we don't. And Life Coach, I believe, is 1-1. One one, Blue is 1-2. and two, And Zoro is 0-2. Oh is that correct? So uh, yeah. who do you think is yes. going to take it? We have Zoro and Life Coach remaining. Um, I think the odds are in Life Coach's favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Just like looking at the scoreboard right now, obviously he's got a score lead. But uh, yeah, Life Coach is a really solid player. I'd like to see him win because he's also one of the uh, international pros. And uh, we got to take down China, so go us. <laughs> All right. Any shout outs before you go? Uh, shout out to Team Archon and um, my grandparents. I'm staying at their place. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Awesome. There Thanks for go. the interview, and uh, good luck in the final tournament of this event. Thanks. All right, so that was Firebat. Awesome to get an interview with him. Uh, really interesting to see, or to hear, excuse me, his uh, responses on that. It's really interesting perspective, as we are going to get into our last match of the day. This is going to decide who is second place in the group, as it's going to be Life Coach versus our looking at Life Coach's decks first. It's going to be uh, Warlock, Druid, and Rogue. Looks like his Warlock is a standard Demon Handlock. Uh, his Druid looks like it's a, a standard mid-range combo Druid with uh, one Living Roots. And finally his Rogue looks like it's going to be just a normal Oil Rogue with a uh, Sludge Belcher and no Heal Bot, interestingly enough. What do you think about this lineup? <laughs> Can you tell what the five mana card is uh, in Life Coach's handlock? The five oh, mana... it's, it's heal bots. Yeah, heal bots. Yeah, it's just heal bots. Okay, I, I was a little thrown off because uh, it's in a different order than it is in English. But yeah, this seems like uh, all very standard decks. I mean, Druid and Handlock are the two decks that ha Life Coach plays the most. The most interesting <clears throat> one though is the Rogue, which I believe is almost an exact copy of Mister Yagut's Rogue. So again, um, he's not really. I feel like he's not really confident with that deck to like build his own version. He's just kind of net decking off of someone he knows and he kind of trusts. Um, that'll definitely be his weakest deck, though, because Life Coach again. It's like one of those classes he never plays. He never plays Priest. He never plays Shaman. He never plays um, Rogue. So just all over the place here. Definitely gonna be interested in seeing some Life Coach Rogue plays. Yeah, as far as uh, Zoro's decks on the screen there, we just saw the Aggro Mech Mage, the Face Hunter, which tops out at 3-mana, and the uh, Tempo Mage, which has um, the... What's the card again? Uh, Ethereal Arcanist, I believe? What's it? Uh, Ethereal Conjurer. Ethereal Conjurer, the 6-3 that gives you a spell, uh, or you discover a spell. So that's going to be our matchups for this, um, I guess we can maybe do... Do you want to do the math right now as far as what Zoro needs to advance? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, but before you do that, can you uh, also share the screen with me? Oh, sorry about that. All right. One sec. Just so we're all synced up and cool, cool. having fun. Yeah, exactly. Just like when I was... Uh, when we were lagging a bit earlier, <laughs> it would have been kind of awkward if you were like a couple minutes ahead. But uh, yeah, we do have the Druid going off against the uh, Temple Mage right off the bat. And uh, this has always been a pretty favored matchup for the Temple Mage. However, the Darnassus, in, which now is two expansions back, has changed that quite a bit. And uh, does have the Innervate hand, uh, does Life Coach. And uh, how do you see this going? Uh, well, generally, well, generally, it's pretty Temple Mage favored. But I think it's even more Tempo Mage favored because there's Mana Worm on turn one. Yeah, definitely. So Mana Worm obviously is a huge deal. Uh, looks like this that was post uh, Mulligan. So uh, I thought they were kind of thinking about their Mulligans, but looks like that's what can, kind of came up at the end. Um, the Source Apprentice is kind of a big deal. Allows Zoro to curve into something rather than just playing that uh, that unstable portal. But, uh, yeah, not much to do... Oh, well, Life Coach has a reasonable hand. Uh, he'll be looking to pick up a 4-drop. His natural progression here is uh, Wrath into Innervate, 5-drop into, hopefully, 4-drop. Right, the problem with any of the 5-drops, though, is that it, they kind of all died to 
<clears throat> the Sorcerer's Apprentice plus Fireball on turn three. So you would think that, um, yeah, Life Coach probably is going to wrath this guy, um, and then on the next turn, Zora will counter with the Sorcerer's Apprentice, and then Life Coach is going to have a bad time with the Fireball, which is probably why he'll probably play the Sludge Belcher. Yeah, it's probably, uh, it's like you say, it's a bit more um, safe to go with that play. Um, Zoro here, I think it would be pretty risky to go for the Unstable Portal and kind of skip his turn potentially. So yeah, it looks like he's going to go with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Maybe he gets, you know, a crazy turn off later. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this kind of pans out and see if uh, Life Coach's uh, Sludge Belcher can kind of hold the fort, as it were, as a life coach is permanently stuck in that that state right there, it seems. And he does get the four he's drop. He's just very surprised. Yeah, he does get the four drop, by the way. He has the best four drop, uh, basically, in the game. Um, so he can go innovate five into four into five, which is uh, pretty good for him right now. And Zoro has kind of some answers for it, but, you know, it's going to be a back and forth. And uh, whereas typically this matchup, or not typically, but uh, often this matchup, uh, it can look pretty one-sided if the Temple Mage has uh, what it wants. Yeah, what it really, really wants. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> Zoro looking already a bit perturbed here, having to deal with a rope every single turn. Did Zoro and Life Coach play at BlizzCon? Do you remember? Um, Zoro, he got out of his group, so. I can't specifically remember. I think he did. I think it might have been Zoro. And uh, I know Cranch definitely got out of that group because he beat Life Coach. But yeah, I think Zoro got out of the group as well. Mm -hmm. So I was about to say this might have been an option for Life Coach just because um, obviously, like you said, a fireball uh, coming out to. A fireball for three mana coming out to kill the Jewel of the Claw would have been pretty bad. Here, Zora's forced to ping potentially, which, uh, I mean, forcing the Tempo Mage to waste quote unquote two mana in this situation is a uh, pretty good tempo. I see Gold Shard Footman comes out of the Unstable Portal, not what you're looking for. <laughs> a little sad there. Um, and yeah, you're right. Zoro actually defeated Life Coach. Or no, he didn't He did beat Life Coach, but he got out of his group in first place. Um, whereas Life Coach uh, finished his group in third place. So even though they didn't hit each other, they um, still had the potential to hit each other. And I think if they actually did fight each other in BlizzCon, Zoro would have won um, by a pretty outstanding record. Because Life Coach was so anti Freeze Mage that he ignored a lot of aggro matchups. Mm -hmm. That definitely makes sense. So um, I can't really imagine Zoro going for anything other than uh, the Shutter here. I guess he could Flame Waker, Coin, Frost Bolt, and kind of put the pressure on Life Coach potentially. But uh, that could be a huge turn later as well. He's. Uh, yeah, I don't mind this at all. He's pretty indecisive here. But, um, yeah, Life Coach has a really good answer for this in that Sludge Belcher. Uh, actually, it's a double Sludge Belcher. So, I mean, we were talking about how this matchup is, you know, Temple Mage favored, but right now, Life Coaching, Life Coach, excuse me, looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, Zoro has had a pretty good opening, but I think the key card that he's missing is really the Mad Scientist into Mirror Entity, which is just the card that Druids fear the most. It just can't deal with Mirror Entities because it overall has such huge minions. Mm -hmm. um, without the Darnassus Aspirin, it's pretty much game over if a Mirror Entity comes on the field. You also have the possibility of Keeper the Grove, but that's generally a kind of a temple loss unless you have something really nice to silence. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of why Darnassus is so good, right? It's kind of, It's basically... Uh, an early minion that you can put on the field. It's like Zobby Chow and uh, and the Kazan Mystic all wrapped into one, especially against Mage. Mm. You're like, ah, uh, kind of. But uh, yeah, so we have an interesting play, interesting turn here from Zoro. Um, I imagine it's going to be almost certainly evolving this Flame Waker, and uh, we might see some fireworks here. Yeah, I definitely think. Uh, well. Oh, yes, just fireworks in one in one aspect, I guess. Just one with big the fire fireball. 
Um, I think with this play, Zoro realizes that, okay, so my my big swing turn will probably come later. I, I need, like, all these spells. Mm. I guess that makes sense. Uh, the flame cannon doesn't is pretty unreliable, as well as the ping afterward. The frostbolt doesn't do a whole lot either. And he, uh, he couldn't play the flame waker and the firebolt. Uh, firebolt. Fireball, excuse me, at the same time. Uh, Life coach, he has an... Okay, turn. He can living roots uh, this four two and play the sludge belter behind it, and kind of gain control of the board once more. Has uh, has answers in his hand, which is reasonable. Totem golem is not what you want oh, to see. Oh, totem golem. It's all right. You can trade into it. Yeah, you can trade into it, which is reasonable. But um, I mean, this game is just kind of back and forth. It does favor life coach in the end because his deck is a little bit more dense. But uh, you know, one good draw from Zoro, like drawing an Antonius or drawing a Doctor Boom, could help him immensely. Right. Uh, notice that Life Coach played the Sludge Ultra before, and that's because there are two bad outcomes uh, by playing it after, and only one bad outcome by playing it before. So it's basically Doomsayer versus the uh, Anubian Weblord and the Mana Wraith. Well, uh, the Sludge Ultra isn't Battle Cry, so the Nero Bar Weblord oh, right. wouldn't really affect that. But uh, yeah, in general, the, there are the, the two things, and you, you kind of want to have that ingrained, right? You don't always want to be Afraid mm. of the uh, Doomsayer, since there's other things as well. Though if you do have one flo one mana floating, and it's not a battle cry, then sometimes you can play, you can look at the uh, Shadow Outcome first. But, um, looks like we're going to have some... Uh, oh. <laughs> so how much oh, does, uh, does Zoro Frostbolt face here, just to risk it? I guess not. Um... Yeah, um, I probably just ping here because um, you don't really want... It's not really that important that the slime dies uh, because Wrath plus Hero Power is a thing. Um, the only thing that would change the math is if Living Roots came down and Life Coach didn't have um, something to couple with that Living Roots. So Living Roots plus Hero Power wouldn't necessarily kill the Flame Waker there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Zoro's kind of saying, like, okay, I can kill this guy next turn. I don't really have to deal with it right now. Um, the face damage might matter. And uh, if I ping this guy, he probably just trades into me. Uh, Life Coach was a really kind of hard decision because he wants to cycle in some way or another. But, uh, I mean, do you just throw away a damage on your Wrath just to cycle? It kind of seems bad. Uh, he could just he could actually Wrath for one and then swipe onto this Flame Waker, right. as bad as it sounds. Uh, another option is if you Wrath for 1 and you draw something, you can just run your guy into it and possibly Hero Power to set up for a swipe ne next turn. Even if you don't draw into something, that's something you can consider. Yeah, and your opponent only has two cards, so uh, that's something to keep in mind. Looks like uh, Life Coach is not going to Wrath for 1. Um, even though you could cycle it, Wrath is a reasonably you know powerful card in and of itself. Uh, as long as you just kind of hold on here, you should be fine. Uh, just don't want to, you know, run to any sort of huge uh, minions coming out from Zoro. But other than that, I think he's okay. But um, yeah, Zoro. I mean, Doctor. yeah. The funny thing is, Life Coach. Just by stabilizing, you kind of figured he was ahead. But um, the fact that he's drawn so poorly so far, it's uh, not worked out for him at all. Obviously, and now Zoro has the more dense hand. Yeah. Uh, usually it's the Druid that has the more dense hand uh, because it just has overall bigger minions. But just a look at the draw for Zora. He gets probably his biggest minion in his deck while Life Coach can't draw uh, one of his three big minions that are almost guaranteed to be in the deck, Dr. Boom and two Ancients of Lore. He also has like just a lot of good mid-range minions like Druid of the Claw or Emperor Thorzin or perhaps even Lotheb. Then again, though, Zoro hasn't drawn into Ethereal Conjurer, so that's a little fair. Yeah, Ethereal Conjure can be something that uh, can do a lot of damage if there's no wrath uh, to deal with it. Life Coach with the same kind of similar dilemma to last turn, um, but uh, if you use the Force of Nature here, it's kind of weak, and uh, just doesn't want to cycle the wrath for or something like this. But he's gonna kind of he's basically gonna, gonna regret this this very next turn with Doctor Boom hitting the field. Is is he really though? Because. Maybe you'd rather just Wrath a Boombot for one, 
than um, than just using the wrath for three damage. I think that might be a possibility as well. Yeah, but I mean, he could have if he just let the uh, flame waker live. Uh, he could have gone force nature wrath for one on the doctor boom as he picks up his own doctor boom, um, and that could have uh, allowed him <clears throat> to deal with the doctor boom instead. But I, I mean, yeah, it could go either way. As far as this turn is concerned, I think fire, the only thing Life Coach is thinking about is uh, whether or not he wants to wrath the cycle on the boom bot, or whether he wants to use hero power. But uh, yeah, it looks like he's just gonna play his Doctor Boom first before he goes ahead and does that. One damage to face is the worst outcome you can have uh, for the person with the Doctor Boom, mm -hmm. unless unless you really really need that one damage to face for for the lethal somehow. Unless you're setting up for lethal four turns in advance, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, Life Coach taking his time as always. Um, it is a pretty hard decision whether or not to Hero Power or Wrath here. Wrath can be useful uh, in future turns, and we, we see two things in Zoro's hand that can be Wrath. So, it makes sense for him to take his time and think about his play. Uh, looks like we're going to have a bomb set off, and four to the face is better than one to the face, so I guess Life Coach kind of wins that. And uh, Zoro, he can shut down this Dr. Boom and start pushing damage to the face, which is important. Uh, how much not only this? that, but yeah, sorry. Not, yeah, not only that, but um, he gets a even more card draw, which is the arcane intellect is probably the best draw in his deck right now, honestly. Yeah, arcane intellect is pretty good for him. He's thinking about using this fireball. Um, however, if he does that, then this Doctor Boom's going to go seven seven into what is basically a scarab at this point. Um, so yeah, that doesn't feel too good. But he does get rid of his opponent's board, and uh, Zoro has, you know, a pretty commanding board lead at the moment. Ancient Lore is oh, pretty Ancient good here. Yeah, sorry. It's honestly probably the best draw right now, um, especially if he goes into a BGH. If it goes Ancient Lore into BGH, the game probably swings right there, back to Life Coach's favor. Yeah, definitely. And at the very least, I mean, it's a 5-5 on the board. Uh, you need, if you don't get BGH, you need minions to kind of compete with this Dr. Boom. And uh, obviously, Life Coach didn't have any minions in hand to be, excuse me, be able to do that. Ooh, hit the Dr. Boom, but didn't hit for enough, so you can't clear with the Wrath, unfortunately. And, uh, well, fortunately for Zoro, I suppose. Savage Roar is picked up. Not going to be enough. Looks like he's probably gonna, just going to cycle this Wrath. Um, since his 5-5 five five theoretically trades into the 7-5 Dr. Boom already. So just wants to get rid of this Source of Dependence and needs more options in general. And uh, with that Azure Drake, looks like Life Coach kind of has some ammo here. Uh, Zoro has used two Fireballs. Um, and is that his second Frostbolt? Or has that been his hand the entire time? Um, now that's a second Frostbolt, I believe. Wait, I, I don't think he actually Frostbolt today. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just trying to, yeah. trying to remember. Yeah, we, we were all thinking like, oh, Frostbolt was always an option. But I, yeah, you're right. I don't believe he ever used it. Um, yeah, it looks like he's finally going to use it as a tempo play to uh, kind of push his seven damage to face. Um, you know, worst case scenario, he can run his Shredder in next turn and kind of keep his uh, Doctor Boom alive. Pretty big risk, especially because Life Coach just picked up uh, some cards to be able to potentially deal with his Doctor Boom. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, I think Keeper is certainly um, the first thing that I would what comes to mind. There's a secret on the board, and there's almost no better card that you'd rather get Mirror Entity. Also, it just lets you trade into the Doctor Boom, which is the biggest threat right now. Uh, because Life Coach has a card advantage, he's not really worried uh, about using um, the Keeper like somewhat inefficiently. He just really wants to worry about surviving right now. And if he can get rid of... Oh, he just goes for that instead. Wild Growth is also an option. Interesting. Um, if, he, if he can get rid of like any damage on the field, if he can get, get rid of all these minions, then he'll, he'll probably take the game. Yeah, definitely. Because there's no burn left in Zoro's... Uh deck and or I think there's one Frostbolt and maybe something else like uh, I don't know Arcane Missiles or something like that but yeah 
Life Coach playing pretty risky, though. I guess, you know, considering that his opponent doesn't have much burn left, that kind of makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Looks yeah, like just... it makes a lot of sense. If, if he knows his opponent doesn't have uh, either Fireball, then he's just setting up lethal right now. Oh, right, right. He's, yeah. he's just basically forcing his opponent to trade. Right, right, right. Um, so, does he have lethal just with his... Yeah, he does, obviously, with his, with his swipe as well. That's uh, plenty of damage. Um... So yeah, Zoro does have to trade here, which is uh, not a place you want to be in against the Druid, especially when the Druid has three cards in hand. Yeah. <clears throat> so, not only does he have to trade, he has to trade twice. Because Azure Drake plus the Shade, I believe, is lethal. That's seven damage on board, and then six from Savage Roar, one from the Hero Power, that's 14, plus five from uh, Swipe. Yeah, so to be exactly if, older. Yeah, so uh, unless there's a taunt. Uh, loot order, isn't it? Yeah, and even even though he's not dead, is Zoro, unless there's a, a savage. I think a force nature would be exactly lethal here. Um, but uh, yeah, so he doesn't pick it up. But I mean, even though, um, you know, Lyco doesn't have lethal here, he's still in awesome spots considering. Um, you know, he now he's able to clear a lot of stuff with a swipe. Uh, the minions he picked up right now aren't the greatest, but it doesn't really matter. He's basically stabilized at this point. Yeah, they're not the greatest, but um, now Life Coach has um, more of a deci decision to make. He he could have uh, silenced the Mad Science before, but now he might not be too sad about getting um, the Darnassus Aspirant Mirror Entity. Um, yeah. Although that I mean, being that being said, though, like you'd rather your opponent not thin out his deck. Exactly. I think you just kind of go for it. Um, just silence the mad scientist, swipe the mad scientist, and then uh, do nothing. Yeah. I guess? Oh, he's gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I think I think that might be better. Yeah, actually, this might be better actually. You're right. A mirror entity, like any card you give your opponent, he'll be able to play for free. So it's really not that different giving your opponent. Um, a secret or putting a secret into play. Mm. So he'd rather his opponent have that mirror entity rather than him have any other random card right, from his right, deck. Right. Definitely makes sense. As we see, Zoro uh, picks up that mirror image, really paying off for Life Coach because Zoro would want to get right past that mirror image into something more useful. But uh, yeah, that mirror image can be really bad for him. Not too much of a decision here to make. I mean. Yeah, I think you play the mirror image, go face. Maybe he's paying back Life Coach for roping him every turn. Who you is... can definitely see the stress level on Zoro's face right now. He he's losing this game, um, and I, I at first like I don't think he can. Can he even tie it up? I mean, he, he is down 0-2. Life Coach is one one. So if he actually wins the series, it'll go to um, Firebat will be 3-0 and everyone else will be 1-2. Mm. But this definitely doesn't look good for him because for him, every game counts. He not only needs to win this match, he needs to win, win it convincingly in order to beat everyone else in score differential. Yeah, we weren't able to do the math, but it could be the case that he has to win 3-0. So maybe that's why he's so despondent. He could have to win every single game in order to uh, make up the game score because he lost 3-1 and then 3-1. So definitely a possibility that he needs to win convincingly here. Uh, uh, so why Why do you think he decided not to use the mirror image? I guess his win condition is Archmage. Yeah, that's probably, so that's probably that what he's doing. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, this this game is just kind of playing out. Life Coach, uh, no danger of dying. Just kind of, kind of clear the board. He's fine using a shade here because his Zerdrick is just as much of a threat. Uh, and there's there's no removal on Zoro's deck anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna just uh, ping here. Uh, there's 100% lethal without playing. If he doesn't play the mirror image, it could be lethal regardless. Actually, yeah, yeah it's, it's probably impossible to do the mirror image, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in case you guys are wondering why Zoro's kind of taking a long time, usually he plays pretty quickly. I'm sure you guys, uh, a lot of you guys saw him at the World Championships, but I think there's a very high chance that if he loses this game, he's done. So that could be the, the reason why he's taking so long. 
Yeah, I'm sure the Chinese casters have done quite a bit of math on this, but... Um, well, Double Savage War is almost certainly lethal, and Zoro is going to fall this first game. Um, like you said, Zoro, he probably is out because he lost this first game. Because he he went 1-3 against Fireband, and I think he went 1-3 against, uh, yeah. against uh, Blue. Or either, even 0-3, I'm not really sure. No, it was 1-3-1-3. 1-3-1-3 yeah. right now. So um, even if he wins here, he can't beat Life Coach or Blue Score in terms of tiebreakers. He can't be better Blue... than minus 2 after losing this right here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and you definitely you need to be positive in order to get out. Yeah, out of a three-way tie, yeah, definitely. So his best um, option is if he goes 3-0, or rather if he went 3-0 here, he would have been 5-6. So honestly, I don't think he could have gotten out either way, no matter how many games he wins, even if he goes a perfect 3-0 here. Yeah, maybe it's just pride. So, maybe he's just kind of yeah. sick of losing, right? Yeah, I'd definitely be sick of losing at this point. Um, and But I think he gets... I hope this is Hybrid Hunter, because if it's Face Hunter... It actually no, it's Face is, Hunter. It's, I saw it's it, it tops out at three, yeah. Right, so this is probably not that good. Like generally you think Hunter is a good matchup, but um just stats wise it's actually close to fifty fifty and probably less than fifty fifty if there's a molten giant in the opening hand. Yeah, especially with the molten taunt there. Um Life Coach, as we saw earlier, had the double anti killbots in. So if he gets a molten taunt up and uh from there can get the heal bot. He, it's the game is kind of over. Uh, obviously, yeah. there's ways for, excuse me, uh, sometimes ways for the face hunter to burst through that, but uh, pretty difficult usually. Yeah, Zero actually used uh, face hunter at BlizzCon, but he was not the Chinese player who used like the super cancer face hunter. Um, Dai Dai Meng, um, or his other name is Butterfly Effect. He used a face hunter with ten one drops in his deck, so there were Lepernomes, uh, Worgen Infiltrators, Abusive Sergeants. But then there were like the weird cards, like there was Clockwork Gnome in that deck, for instance, which doesn't, I don't know, I'm not sure it makes that much sense. Yeah, we saw a lot of Clockwork Gnomes um, in the Face Hunters of the Chinese players, especially in the uh, Hearthstone team story. So, yeah, I guess they just like that card for the versatility it pro provides. Sometimes you can maybe silence, you know, your opponents, or sorry, I mean, freeze your opponents. Uh, minions to prevent minion trading, which is obviously a huge tempo swing. But uh, yeah, Life Coach in a bit of pressure here. Do you think he kind of preferred the Huffer there just to? Uh, you take two more damage, but you clear your opponent's board. Uh, he has a decision here. He can um, coin Twilight Drake, but that kind of prevents him from ever playing his Mountain Giant ever again. Mm -hmm. um, though that's probably a pipe dream at this point anyway. You can. Uh, do you ever consider just? Dark bombing the the Leoc in, yeah. in order to set up for Hellfire. That seems really weak, though. Yeah, but then you take eight damage, and then you take three damage, and then two damage. So thirteen. You basically guaranteed take thirteen damage, and you give your opponent first play. So <laughs> it's just like uh, I think you're dead at that point. Um, yeah, I was looking at that play for a second too, but then it's like, wait a second, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm glad you did the math on it for both of us. Uh. In any case, uh, you know, regardless, there is a lot of damage coming out for Zoro. Uh, 8 on the field, plus he can add another 5 from his hand. So there's that 13 damage I just mentioned. <laughs> um, I imagine you just go for it, right? Bring your opponent right down to 7. Uh, it's, he doesn't have enough mana for Healbot. And then you just kind of kill him from there. Though I guess if he goes double Molten, then Taunt. And then he goes Healbot the next turn, you kind of just lose. Yeah, but uh, if that happens, like... If you're a face hunter and your handlock opponent has exactly that, then you're you're probably not meant to win that game. Yeah. So it looks like he's going for the uh, play that I was thinking about. Uh, looks like he's receiving some lag issues as well. But um, yeah, this game looks. Uh, I guess not, it's not super over. Uh, Life coach does get a does get an additional taunt. Um, so he can molten. He can Molten Defender, or he can Molten Sun Fury Dark Bomb. Um, either way, do you think... Yeah, it looks like he's going to clear the Leo. It's just too much damage. Uh, you kind of want to start racing, but at the same time... Um, it's just... You're too much buffing potential on the field. 
Right. And uh, also, you don't want the beast on the field in order to a enable kill command. Right, right. <clears throat> so, no burst coming out of Zoro. Uh, he can play this explosive trap and just kind of uh, ping the face here. Um, I mean, the only time you really don't want to be playing a trap like that is like right before Jaraxxus, because they can kind of just eat the damage for free. But uh, in this case, that's not coming for a long time, obviously, so... Um, I imagine we might see that. Just to prevent any sort of racing. He might, yeah, it looks like he's cashing in his uh, Leper Gnome to make sure that uh, it doesn't get silenced. That could be one of the ways that, um, you know, Life Coach comes back in this game. Regardless, I think Life Coach has to top deck Hailbot right now. Can he wait mm -hmm. one more turn? Maybe. Yeah, I think he possibly has one more turn. Um, I might even consider just trading everything into the Twilight Drake here. Um, just so, like, Mortal Quill isn't as big of a deal. Oh, also, right. you can't trade the um, the uh, Defender of Argus into any of your minions, and you basically guarantee that... Oh, that's... Okay, that sets up for Explosive Trap. So now he has a bigger chance to get through all these minions. And there's the Mortal Coil. Um, so if Life Coach attacks here, he's dead. So do you just pass? I mean, do you just play, like, a Sunfear or something and pass? Maybe Dark Bomb the face? <laughs> um, huh. I'm trying to think if there's any way to activate Mortal Coil. But I don't see one here. <laughs> Zero making sure there's no Mortal Coil targets for him. Uh, even if Life Coach Mortal Coils, was there a Farseer in his deck? I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't believe I saw one. But it also, uh, if he Mortal Coils here, though, it gives him a higher chance in order uh, to get anti bot the next turn. So, uh, I don't know. If he doesn't have anything to do anyway, uh, it could be something to consider. Good thing that Zoro traded in all his two ones, though. Yeah. So this game's looking about 1%, uh, maybe even less, for Life Coach to win. Uh, looks like he's just going to play a minion and not attack. Um, basically his win condition is get heal bot and race or get heal bot and get another something to heal himself um, but uh, yeah, Zoro has the flare there flare is something that you don't want to show if you think you're going to lose but at this point it's more likely that it's going to help him win the game here uh, animal companion won't help him so it looks like he's just... I mean, knowing that his opponent has to top deck right now, uh, since he didn't do anything last turn, it's you might as well just uh, let him die here. It's going to be Big Game Hunter. Zero calls... Did he call Well Played there? Oh, I didn't get to see. He called something. I think he called Well Played. Uh, looks like it's going to be a game here. Life Coach can't do anything. He's going to have to attack in. I, I mean, he doesn't have any healing in his hand. Um... And there's no real way to if, draw. Yeah, at this point, even if the trap is snake trap, for instance, there's still no way. For life coach's own peace of mind, though, he has to know. Yeah. Alright, so that's going to be it. That was uh, kind of long, even by life coach's standards, as far as... <laughs> <laughs> the amount of time he put into thinking there. And it's going to tie up the series one game to one. It clears Zoro's Hunter. And uh, what did what did Life Coach win with first? Druid? Okay, yeah. All right, so yeah, we have uh, Shaman and Mage remaining for Zoro and Warlock and Rogue remaining for Life Coach. It'll be interesting to see how they kind of adapt to these decks. I think Zoro's played a lot of decks uh, kind of over the weeks, you know, skimming with his... Uh, his allies, or his, not his allies, his uh, teammates and everything over at Celestial. Yeah. Celestial must be really proud. Um, I noticed they, they got these new uniforms that they didn't have at BlizzCon. Um, they're also probably proud of Zoro overall because he qualified for their own tournament. It's always nice. Like I know when Liquid hosts our own tournament, it's always nice for our players to uh, get really far. Yeah. Uh, 
Celestial, they have Zoro, Chaoshan, and I believe one other player, maybe Jaisha, who has qualified for this. Uh, their players were always, you know, qualifying through the pro qualifier uh, to the qualifiers for this uh, yeah. in order to kind of make that tournament. Um, well, when your team has around 20 players, yeah. it's probably a little easier to qualify for these. Yeah, a bit easier. Um, actually, uh, Blue... Uh, he qual the week he qualified. Um, it could have been a different celestial member who qualified uh, by the name of Breath, and he actually lost because he played too fast, and um, he played Leroy Jenkins and accidentally attacked the whelp as it was coming down because he uh, you know what comes oh my okay. god yeah he accidentally tapped the whelp with his face instead of attacking uh, his opponent's face, and that cost him. I it I think it. He, that was the uh, the semifinal match, but he was a really good player, and I think he he could have taken the finals as well. So right, he was it was he a hunter? Was he playing hunter at the time? Yeah, he's playing playing face hunter. Yeah, right. he needs to watch that uh, that music video. <laughs> Which one? The, you know the one. You know the one I'm talking about. There's so Do many hunter music videos. Yeah, well, you go face. That one. Oh, yep. Okay. He 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 didn't really know if he uh he didn't know the way to the face, I guess. <laughs> uh interesting. Anyway, so in any case we have uh the Mech Shaman here, the Fell Reaver variant of the Mech Shaman. Well, the Fell Reaver variant in the sense that um it has basically a standard Mech Shaman that we see by today's standards, plus it has two Fell Reavers. Yep. Definitely a very risky addition. Um Especially against Handlock, which you, against a deck that you know always has BGHs in their deck, and also a deck that just draws so many cards in the early stages of the game. Yeah, we see no BGHs there right now, though. But uh, I wonder if Zoro is going to tempt this right here. He does have a way to clear if he trades correctly. Like if he hits the Power Mace and the Abuse Charge into the um, into uh, the Void Collar, then he can Rock Biter. Is a uh, shredder, but uh, that's a lot of damage not going to face, <laughs> especially if you're life coach. I don't think he wants to be hit in the face right now. Maybe uh, like Zoro is considering the possibility of getting wrecked by molten giants, but instead he gets wrecked by Malgat. Is kind of kind of yeah. I mean he he deals with it pretty cleanly. Um, gets an armor smith, which is not the biggest deal either way. Uh, I guess it's not that much attack, so there is that. Life Coach does lose a minion from his hand, so it's going to be a 4-6 instead of a 4-7. But uh, currently no answer for this Fell Reaver. And it's going to be a 10-10. Yeah, double is threatening. So the right. real question here is, is, is big, big Game Hunter drawn? <laughs> I don't know, but that rocket truck really doesn't want us to see the hand. Right. <laughs> I've been noticing that as well. Uh, looks like we're having a bit some issues here. Um, if he doesn't draw the big game hunter, I don't think he's going to tap for it. Likely just going to be the ancient watcher into a defender of Argus, uh, which is what his hand was earlier. Yeah, um, he might be tempted or baited into playing Emperor Thorzin, but we can tell that that would just be game over. Yeah, with the uh, 10 damage right out of hand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if he does go for the Ancient Watcher and uh, Defender of Argus play, uh, it would, as he picks up the second Ancient Watcher, it would be pretty annoying for Zoro considering um, he can't just Lala Burst those guys, and he, won't, he would probably be tempted to just play the second Fell Reaver. Oh, those are really good discards by Zoro. Oh, oh that's Iron not a good Cal. discard, though. <laughs> All right, so it evened out, right? Uh, right. The owl was really bad for him to discard. The other ones were really good for him to discard. Yeah. Um, also interesting to note that the Chinese players tend to really like Iron Begal and their Mech Shaman decks over Earthshock. We saw it from uh, Dae Meng in uh, in uh, BlizzCon, actually. Mm -hmm. He used Iron Begal in a kind of really interesting um, Mech Shaman deck. Yeah. I guess they, they just really value the 2-1 body over the um, 1 damage that Earthshock can usually cause. 
And I think that's fair because a lot of minions these days, or a lot of death rival minions, or minions that you want to silence don't have one health. They usually have around two health. Yeah. Like Leper Lo Gnome is less common, Web Spinner is less common. Meanwhile, Mad Scientist is just as common as ever. Uh, Shield and Minibot, Mad Scientist, they all have two health. Whereas the uh, the two attack from the Iron Beak Owl just deals with that better. Yeah, definitely. Especially, especially in those early game kind of uh, interactions, right? If your opponent plays, you know, Mad Scientist, you're like, well, I have this Urshock. Uh, it doesn't do much. It kind of feels like playing a, a Silence for one mana, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Silence the card in Priest. That's... Yep. Um, Zoro has currently hovered over... Although, I'm not sure if that's the Observer or if it's Zoro, but they're hovered over the deck showing that there's uh, 14 cards remaining. And just one you know, card played out of Life Coach will discard 6 cards, so he could get him down to 2 cards if he just goes with... Uh, you know, uh, Twilight Drake plus Watcher here. And I believe that's game. Yeah, that is game. Because, yeah, there's nothing, there's no taunt to put in the way, there's no way to deal with the Giants, or the Fell Reavers, as they were. And so, yeah, Zora's gonna take this game by just smacking the face for 10, maybe 8, doesn't really matter. Double Lava Bursting. It's gonna put him up 2 games to 1. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, this was just not in the cards for a life coach. And uh, Panlock goes down once again. The, I, the thing I'm, it's really interesting about Mech Shaman is that oftentimes it feels like a coin flip in the sense that you either get a good curve early on and you smoke your opponent to death or you don't. But also there's like a mini game inside Mech Shaman, whereas, whereas uh, like I play Fell Reaver. Do you have an answer to that? Do you have Big Game Hunter? If not, uh, it just does too much damage. So just like kind of like a 50-50 within a 50-50, a mini game within mm -hmm. like the, the game that is Mech Shaman. Yeah, especially if you're running the those... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, looks like the stream is lagging pretty badly. Um, that was weird. Oh, that's pretty bizarre. So the actual stream that I'm looking at didn't look so bad, but uh, OBS kind of lagged out. Sorry about that, guys. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to look at chat to kind of confirm that. Looks like people are ruining your chat experience. So, um, sorry about that. I'll kind of keep an eye on OBS in the future to uh, make sure that that, doesn't, that isn't the case any longer. But uh, those that is uh, on my side, so my apologies. In any case, we are going to be going into the Tempo Mage versus the Handlock once more for Life Coach to see who can come out of this. Um, I believe we, so if Life Coach loses, he's going to be at 1 and 2, and then we have to go into Tiebreakers. Um, and that'll be interesting to see how the math goes there. Yeah, um, do you want to try to figure it out right now? Because Life Coach would be at 1 and 3, uh, 2 and 3 versus Firebat, and in the match that he won, I think he was 3 and 1, I want to say. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I can confirm that right now. So Life Coach, uh, 3 and 1, and... Two and three, right? Right. So, um, and then blue was uh, one and three versus life coach, and then three and one, and then his last game versus firebat was one and three. So he's overall minus two on the day, and so life coach, if he loses here, one and three, he actually just life coach already just advance. Oh yeah, that's a possibility, but uh. We really have to comment on this Toshly in in Zoro's hand. The double Toshly. And this and this other Toshly <laughs> in Zoro's hand. All right, sorry. As I go down to look at uh, my paper, I look up and there's double Toshlys. That's like so interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, but, that obviously is really hard for Life Coach to deal with uh, having these Tosh or having the five seven body. Yeah, and just even more spare parts for him to combo with. Um, there was actually an interesting scenario that happened at the Onog finals in which Tom, he got a Nexus Champion to rod off of his first unstable portal. And everyone, Reddit, the chat, um, even the casters were like, oh my god, that's so amazing. But what they failed to realize is that in a Tempo Mage deck, Nexus Champion to rod might not be the greatest at getting tempo. And even though Tom, he played the Nexus Champion Sarad, he wasn't able to like get enough value out of it. 
Um, and he just lost, he, he got some value out of it, but he like couldn't get tempo out of it, basically. And he lost the game from there. The difference between Nexus Champions, Rod, and Toshley is that Toshley, just as a standalone card, gives you kind of really good tempo. Yeah, exactly. Just that 5-7 body is pretty tough to deal with. Um, you know, by itself, it's a reasonable body to put in the field just for 6 mana. And uh, obviously those spare parts being able to synergize so well with your deck is, uh, is pretty huge. Right, so with the spare part, you got the uh, freezing spare part. So that just means like it's a much better frost elemental on this turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just uh, frost elemental for three mana sounds pretty good. Well, four if you consider that he floated a mana. But uh, as far as life coach is concerned, do you think he'd be greedy enough to play Mountain Giant here? Versus the other. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think I mind Mountain Giant at all since it contests the Toshley. That's the only really it's the only card in his hand that currently contests Toshley. Not only that, if he doesn't play Mountain Giant now, he's probably never gonna get a chance to play it in future turns. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's going to opt to go with uh, Dark Bomb and Sun Fury Protector to make sure that his Malganus gets out right now. Either that or his, uh, or his White Collar. Um, obviously, he could have tapped Mountain Giant as well, so maybe he was doing that math. But um, yeah, Zoro. Quite a few options here. Sees the uh, Void Collar come out. Not really. I mean, so many things to do here, right? He could play the Ethereal Conjure, uh, he could play the second Toshley. Could just unstable portal to get third Toshley, maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't put all my eggs in uh, all my eggs in that one basket. Um, just looking back into the game one of the series, though, if you remember, like Zoro was really stressed uh, when he was losing game one, and I think that might be because he realized that if he lost, he would just ruin it for his countrymen. Oh right, right. That, yeah, that could be the case. Um... Yeah, we, I mean, just by virtue of uh, Life Coach losing just 2-3 to Firebat, not 1-3, uh, he could be already out of this group. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe they're kind of uh, pressuring him to be able to win uh, that first game, and he was uh, kind of bummed out about it. But I wonder if Life Coach knows, uh, knows that as well. I mean, he seems to be taking these matches really, really seriously. Um, I think even if the matches were for, like, Two dollars or one dollar, Life Coach would take matches seriously. He's really not one to kid around when it comes to Hearthstone. He takes, um, he's like devoted his life or his recent years of his life to it, and he just he's the kind of person that just goes all in, one hundred percent all the time. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Life Coach is gonna mitigate some of the damage on the board by uh, potentially clearing this Mad Scientist. Um, he can next turn play. He can potentially next turn play. Uh, Watcher Molten Healbot, uh, if he's worried about that. Though, um, another possibility is... Oh, it looks like he's just going to do it this turn. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. So that makes sense. Um, unfortunately, Zoro has not gotten a Taunt uh, Spare Part, the Rusty Horn, out of any of those. So, unable to make use of this Ancient Watcher right now. Can you imagine if Archimedes and Janice were drawn here? I can't imagine what it will look like. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, Zoro is just going to wait until he's about, like, turn, you know, 8 or 9, so he can actually use these spare parts. He doesn't really need to have it right now. Does have the mere entity to be able to, um, you know, screw up Life Coach's turn next turn as well. I'm going to just go ahead and do that and uh, get some roadblocks that this Void Collar can't proc itself, and uh, maybe just push damage to the face. Definitely makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Zoro thinks that this is like a countermeasure against Molten Giants because you have the Mirror Entity up, but we know that that's unfortunately not the case for him. Um, the issue here, though, is that even if he goes Molten Giant into Big Game Hunter, um, he risks just dying to a lot of spells, including Fireball. Yeah, so in that sense, it kind of is a countermeasure because he can't do Molten Healbot, right? It's really hard to do that. So um, kind of, uh, you know, restricting what Life Coach is capable of doing. Obviously, he can play the Big Game Hunter to play around this Mirror Entity, but now you're giving him a Big Game Hunter that does 4 damage to your face. So uh, pretty difficult turn for Life Coach here. 
Yeah, Life Coach just might be thinking that Zoro, he's already seen a counter spell from Zoro, and he's only seen one mirror entity from Zoro. So this, he just might have to go for the risk that this is not the, um, the mirror entity, instead it's the counter spell. And if he just assumes that, then he has to just Molten Giant, hope for the best. If that doesn't, if it's a mirror entity, then he big game hunters it and hopes for the best that Zoro doesn't have a fireball in his hand. Yeah. Uh, he gets the bad news now, though. And unfortunately, this looks to be uh, the end of this game, at least, with a Frostbolt to boot. Yep, so that's going to be game. Uh, Zoro is going to take it three games to one. Um, we will keep a close eye on any graphics that come up on the screen to kind of indicate uh, who has advanced from this group. We do believe that it's still Life Coach despite losing one game to three there. Um, so Well, yeah. here's the thing. Not only... Um, we do think that Life Coach beat Blue in terms of game score, but not only that, um, I think he beat Blue head-to-head, -head, so... In both types of tiebreakers, he comes out ahead. Yeah. Um, so if you guys aren't aware, the tiebreakers that they use are obviously match score first, so overall series score, uh, which everyone is 1-2 except for Firebat, who is 3-0. And then they go by game difference. So right now, Fire, uh, Live Coach is minus 1 uh, because he's 6-7. And, and Zoro, sorry, uh, Blue is 5-7, and seven, so he's minus 2. Uh, Zoro, just by the way, let me just uh, do this really quick. He was uh, one three, one three three one. So he's a uh, five and seven as well. Okay, we have that on the screen right there. So, all right. So life coach, yeah. So life coach is going to move on. Uh, that tiebreaker decided by that. So and the the but after that tiebreak, the last tiebreak is um, game one. And uh, there are some instances where you could tie in games in game difference, but somehow you have more uh, games won in the end. So, uh, all of you life coach fans out there, don't worry, you will be seeing him despite his loss here today. And uh, did you catch the match tomorrow? I was looking at the uh, the first box. Um, it's going to be Follower, Eloise, Surrender, and Jaysha. Yeah. Yeah. So look forward to that. We have um, our all Asian group, and I'm sure we're allowed to make that joke because we're both Asian. Right. But <laughs> right. Is it? Is it even a joke though? Uh, I don't know if it's a joke. It's it's a it's a statement. It's 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 the truth, right? So it's Eloise and Surrender are the invited players, and um, at least for uh, Surrender, it's really nice to see that uh, Surrender is being invited to more of these tournaments, even the um, Chinese tournaments, because typically. Um, invites are done by like streamer popularity, but we can definitely see that this invite was definitely done by um, just skill and results, especially on the in, in the Korean scene. Eloise also it'd be nice to see Eloise um, playing because after all, we are being hosted on the Tempo Storm stream, so he has some uh, hometown pride on our stream right here. Yeah, definitely uh, big thanks to her for and, and Tempo Storm in general for allowing us to use the Tempo Storm stream. Um, that's going to be us. Master Dong, look, you're... Uh... That's... I don't <laughs> think that's me. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway. All right, so that's going to be it for us. Uh, I will let the credits run out, and then we're going to end the stream there. Uh, it'll be me and Monk tomorrow once again, and uh, we will get to you those matches with uh, Eloise. What was that? Eloise, Follower, Jaysha, and Surrender. So make sure you turn in, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.